In Activity 1, Weathering, students are introduced to a process that must take place before erosion can occur, weathering. Students first discuss physical and chemical weathering, and then observe and record signs of physical weathering on their way to and from school. Finally, they simulate the chemical weathering of a mineral sample. You will need the following materials from the kit. Activity Sheet 1, Dropper Bottles, Calcite Chips, Magnifiers, and Vinegar. You will also need to provide safety goggles and paper towels. To prepare for Session 1, make a copy of Activity Sheet 1 for each student. To begin Session 1, introduce the term weathering as the very slow process of breaking down rocks and minerals on the Earth's surface into smaller pieces. Go on to explain that there are two types of weathering, physical and chemical. Tell students that they will investigate physical weathering in Session 1 and chemical weathering in Session 2. Next, define physical weathering as the mechanical breaking down of rock. Ask students, what can you think of that could cause physical weathering? Encourage answers that relate to temperature, water, plant roots, and wind. Inform students that extreme changes in daytime and nighttime temperatures can cause rocks to crack. As a rock heats up, it expands, and as it cools down, it contracts. A rock will crack when constantly subjected to uneven rates of temperature change. Ask students, how do you think water might help break rocks apart? Some students may suggest that ice can crack rocks. Explain that when water from rain, snow, fog, or dew seeps into the cracks in rocks and freezes, it expands, making the cracks larger and eventually breaks the rocks into smaller pieces. Next, ask students, how do you think plants contribute to weathering? Some students may have seen the damage that tree roots can do to a sidewalk. Explain that plant roots can grow in the cracks of rocks, further breaking down the rocks. Then, ask students, how can wind weather rocks? Encourage answers that involve the breaking down of rock, which is weathering, not the carrying away of the rock particles, which is erosion. Explain that the force of the wind pushes against rock, and wind can carry particles of sand or soil that will wear away the rock. This constant buffeting by the wind and by wind-blown particles weathers the rock. To conclude Session 1, distribute a copy of Activity Sheet 1 to each student. Inform students that they are to look for signs of weathering on their way home and on their way back to school. Have them record their observations on the activity sheet. To prepare for Session 2, fill each dropper bottle half full with vinegar, attach the tip, and screw on the cap. Each team of four will need a dropper bottle with vinegar, a calcite chip, a magnifier, and some paper towels. To begin Session 2, have students retrieve their activity sheets. Discuss the evidence of physical weathering that they observed. Cracks in sidewalks caused by tree roots, potholes caused by freezing and thawing of streets, and stones under rain gutters, worn by falling water, are all evidence of weathering. Next, define chemical weathering as the breaking down of rock caused by changes in the chemical composition of the rock. Inform students that oxygen in the air can react with certain deposits in rocks, such as iron, weakening the rocks and causing them to crumble. This process is known as oxidation. Mention that rust is a form of oxidation on metal. Most students will recognize that a rusty piece of metal is weaker than a piece that is not rusty. Guide students to imagine an iron ore deposit in a huge rock. If the iron ore is exposed to the air, oxygen will react chemically with the iron ore, weakening it and causing the rock around it to crumble. This is an example of chemical weathering by oxidation. Next, Tell the students that they will experiment with another type of chemical weathering and ask, what do you think acid rain is? Explain that acid rain is rain that comes in contact with contaminants, such as industrial exhausts, and becomes acidic. Have students answer question two on their activity sheets. Distribute the materials to each team of four. Have the teams put several drops of vinegar on their calcite chip and to observe what happens. Instruct students to record their observations on activity sheet one. Remind students that rocks are made primarily of minerals. Then ask students, what is the vinegar doing to the mineral? The students will see very small bubbles in the vinegar and should notice that some of the calcite chip has dissolved. Explain to the students that vinegar is a mild acid. In this experiment, the vinegar represents acid rain. The mineral sample is calcite, which is found in marble, limestone, and chalk. Next, Ask students, what do you think will happen to a statue made of marble or a building made of limestone if acid rain falls on it? Acid rain will slowly dissolve the calcite in the marble or limestone, causing the structure to become brittle and eventually crumble. 
go on to explain that acids reacting with certain minerals in rocks, causing the rocks to break and crumble, is another form of chemical weathering. Finally, have students complete the activity sheet. To conclude the activity, discard the calcite chips. Return the magnifiers and bottles of vinegar to the kit. For science background, reinforcement activities, curriculum connections, and information about the Delta Science Reader, please consult your DSM teacher's guide.